Do Christians have authority over demons? What does the Bible teach about this matter? The first point that I want to make in considering this is to recognize the proper seat of authority. And what I mean by that is that all authority comes from God. He is the source of all authority. It trembles before him. He, um, through the power of the word aseity, A-S-E-I-T-Y, it's one of the um, the characteristics of his ontology or being, um, through a, a, the property of aseity means that God sustains everything that exists. And if he didn't sustain something such as you or me or Satan or Gabriel or the earth or anything else, if he stopped sustaining it by his life-giving presence, it would just whoop, be gone. Like it was never even there, like it never even happened. It would just be utterly gone. And so you can imagine um, God is the only self-sufficient, uncreated being. And therefore, he, he, he depends alone upon himself and depends upon no one else and nothing else for his being. But yet, we as creatures, as created beings, completely are utterly dependent upon him for our being for our existence, and if he didn't sustain us, then we'd be gone. And so, think about authority in that context. Like, is he up in heaven wringing his hands like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? Like, like, no, bad Satan, bad! Like, is... Like, is is that what's happening? God, he speaks and light appears, and, and and it just keeps on appearing. Ever since he said, let there be light. Is, is this God in heaven wringing his hands like, no, like I never thought this was going to happen. Like, stop like, or something. Like, is that is that who he is? Or is he utterly, 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 utterly sovereign? And the angels tremble before him knowing that he could just utterly obliterate them in the blink of an eye and there's nothing they could do about it but be obliterated. Like, he is utterly sovereign. Even the pagan king Nebuchadnezzar said in Daniel, I think chapter 4, no one can say to him, what do you mean by doing these things? No, he just does what he wants. He's God. He's king. He's sovereign. He's Lord. Period. Right? Jesus. Is that to recognize he is the source of all authority. And if there's anyone else that has authority, and the Bible teaches that, that governments have authority, uh, the power of the sword, so to speak. Um, angels are given authority for things. God sends them out. People are given authority, which we're going to talk about. Um, that authority is always delegated. God's authority is is inherent in his being or in his ontology. But everybody else's authority is delegated by God. And there is no way to get around that. There is no strut up to his throne, grab the scepter out of his hand, say, nee, 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 boo, boo, and then run away. Like... No, like authority exists because it flows from his being and his person. And so whenever we understand that, we understand that God has, he's utterly supreme. He's utterly supreme. The reason why anything exists is because he created it. The reason why things continue to exist is because he sustains it, right? And so um, that's a kind of authority like, you know, kings, what does Jesus say? You know, the great men of this earth lorded over their, over their people or whatever. I'm paraphrasing. It's like, you know, a a governor or a president or somebody who has authority, they they don't even understand what authority is. Like they don't, they don't, they don't get it. Right. Because, because they, they are depending upon the person that they issue a command to actually doing what they say. Right. But they could. I mean, there's certainly many um, coups, coup d'etats in history where people uh, grab power. And they don't do what the king says and they go against the king. Well, this is not a possibility here. Even if every angel and every demon, the host of heaven and the host of hell join together and all humans, all creatures join together in a protest. You know, we're going to do what we want. We're going to take the kingdom. 
do you see how that's not that's not a th- Jesus? That's not a threat to him. It does it doesn't threaten him a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth. And even if it did, so what? Right? It doesn't threaten him. It doesn't shake him an iota. It doesn't move him uh, a nanometer. Jesus. It doesn't shake him. Because his enemies that are blaspheming him, he's putting air in their lungs. He's, you know, so, you know people say Bill Gates is rich. Well, let me tell you something. Bill Gates doesn't sustain his enemies. I mean, maybe Bill Gates plots against his enemies, right? Bill Gates doesn't pay their bills. He doesn't put oxygen in their lungs. God is so rich that he sustains his enemies and they use the breath that he gave them. I think it's Ezekiel 16. Read Ezekiel 16. Uh, talking about Israel in the context of a swaddling baby who he raised up to be his bride of sorts. And she, she uses the good things, the grain and the, um, the wine and the beautiful clothing with embroidery and the, the fancy jewels. And she uses them to adorn her idols. But she, she got them from God, right? Um, God sustains his enemies. And so they, the, the enemies of God, including the devil, think that they're self-sufficient, suppose themselves to be able to fight against him and deny him. But yet he is so very rich that he is actually sustaining their being and they couldn't blaspheme him without his absolute sustenance thereof. Okay, so we're going to read a... Um, a footnote out of um, the book, Who is the Holy Spirit, which the link to this book is in the description. The uh, book is totally free and public domain, and please download it and use it however you want to. Um, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and of righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, right? Okay, and so this footnote I'm reading is out of part three of the book. Um, the book is still... Um, in the final draft stage and so the pages aren't 100% set so I'm not going to tell you it's in the 900s or possibly the high 800s Uh, it's in part 3 in the last section there's uh, no green dot and no yellow dot because they are um, scriptures that use the word spirit but they are not explicit or inferred references to the Holy Spirit okay and so um, I mean, we can just read Matthew 10, 1 right now and, and understand that. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Okay, obviously that's not the Holy Spirit, right? To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And so um, the point that we want to recognize is that... Um, God has authority and he delegates it, um, right? So the first point that I make in this footnote really is he created all spiritual powers, Colossians 1.16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Second, Um, For those powers, so non-angelic powers, demonic powers um, that are in rebellion to him, he, and this is how the Bible talks about salvation, already not yet. And it talks about the kingdom, already not yet. And it also talks about his victory over them, already not yet. Mark uh, 12, 36, for David himself said by the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And so this is an, uh, this is an ongoing activity, right? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 through 28, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him, a.k.a. God, right? 
And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Colossians 2.15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Um, 1 John 3, 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of Man was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Um, third, Jesus reigns over the enemy. Um, Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Ephesians 1, 21, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And so his, his, his authority is unshaking. It's unwavering. Even a hundred trillion, 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 trillion years from now, it won't change. Jesus, it will not change. Right? He's still going to be king installed at the right hand of the power of God. Powers and authorities made subject unto him. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made a footstool. Uh, and then the verse that I just referred to, 1 Peter 3.22, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Now, um, the angels are happy about this because Jesus created them and he sustains them. And they, uh, just like in Isaiah chapter 6, they cry out, holy, holy, holy. They are stunned and amazed and overwhelmed and in awe of the glory of God and so that they get to just sit there and say the same thing over and over again for thousands of years in a row. It doesn't get boring. It doesn't get old. They are in amazement of who God is and what he's doing. The Bible says that the angels are looking into the things that God is doing on the earth. The Bible says that he's using his work in the church to teach them what he's doing and so the, the angels are absolutely in awe of who he is. Um, they obviously are not in rebellion against him. They are um, praising him and serving him and obeying him. Uh, the demons, uh, Satan and his host, uh, hate God and um, rebel against him, though their uh, rebellion is at his pleasure. Right, because he could he could snap his fingers, he could just whisper the tiniest little word from his breath, and they'd be utterly, 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 utterly crushed. As I as I mentioned before, with the property of his deity, he just withdraw his sustenance, and they just. Whoop! And so, can, can you imagine the overwhelming victory? Like every enemy just utterly, utterly crushed forever, without even a blink of an eye. Just whoop! like it's not a problem, like no problem at all. And so, like enemy, enemy, in a sense, enemies serve. At his pleasure, and he can he can withdraw them at any moment without the slightest bit of problem, the slightest bit of hassle, the slightest bit of inconvenience or difficulty. He just, boop! you see what I'm saying? And so um, there's nothing that happens apart. Jesus, there's nothing that happens apart from God's power in His reign and His rule and His authority. Um, also, to see, I don't have this in the scriptures, but to see. Uh, that he reigns against them. Like whenever you look at the scriptures of the um, Jesus interactions with demons in the New Testament, they say things like, have you come to terrorize us before the time? Right? Because they recognize, so that they, they have so much power over the demoniac that there are thousands of demons in this man causing him to cut himself and to rip off chains and to terrorize a region so that people can't even pass through that area. But he has so much power over them that they say to him, have you come to terrorize us before the time? You see what I'm saying? They recognize that he is utterly, 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 utterly. I could just keep on saying that word over and over again. I don't know that it'd be helpful. But he, he reigns over them purely, wholly, completely, fully. Um, fourth, and we just we saw this whenever we just read Matthew 10, chapter or chapter 10, verse 1, just a minute ago. But he gives this authority 
to his brothers to combat, combat the activity of demons. And it's important for me to say always and to emphasize always that this is... Um, the authority is not a blank check. And I think that it seems like a lot of people, particularly in the charismatic movement, kind of treat authority as a blank check. I'm a king's kid, and I'm going to rebuke the devil. And they do something like this. They say, Satan, I command you to go to hell right now forevermore. I mean, thank you. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I just used my authority as a king's kid, and I commanded him, and he immediately obeyed by my power and my glory and my honor. Oh, I mean, Jesus, right? See, the Bible, the Bible teaches us that um, there's stuff that's going to happen to Satan, right? And that's God's plan, which he ordained from before the beginning. And so um, I don't have the authority to command Satan to go to hell. Even if I say that I do and pat myself on the back, like I just, I just don't have that authority, right? Because God's going to ultimately defeat Satan in his time and in his way. And so the idea that I can just circumvent that authority, which comes from God, and do it myself is absurd. It's absurd, right? It's a, it's a, it's a proud, unbelieving, Jesus, self-righteous, self-sufficient use of authority. Um, and, and God doesn't sustain that, right? Authority comes from him. He sustains it. And so because of that, we, we can never ultimately use authority apart from him, apart from the leading of his Holy Spirit, apart from the sustenance of his being, because it always comes from him. It's never, ever a blank check. But nonetheless, for his purposes and for his glory, he gives authority to his brothers to combat the activity of the enemy, and we will uh, examine that in the next video, so part two of our considerations on authority.